Hello there and welcome to food sensitivity testing with the homeostasis diet. If you're familiar with my videos, you know they're going to be jam-packed with so much information that you may decide to go get a bag of popcorn. Just kidding, don't eat popcorn, grain brain, read that book, don't, popcorn's bad. But these videos are going to be jam-packed with education and I hope this education helps to take you to places and spaces that you've never been before. So without further ado, I'm going to show you what these tests look like and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown. As you can see over here, we have some severe reactions to avocados, garlics, and sweet potatoes. But I thought being vegan was good. Well, we're about to find out what's good and bad for you. And I hit, I missed the pause button again. And you know what? We're going to go with it. Because when you create your dream reality, things like that are going to happen. And then you're going to get tired of recording the video like 9,000 times. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you're going to see are severe, moderate, mild, and acceptable. Acceptable are the foods that we are okay to consume. Mild are the ones that we probably should avoid. They might be causing some sort of sensitivities to you. So if you're developing IBS, you're having diarrhea, you're getting headaches, you're getting a lot of common health issues. Majority of those common health issues are connected to the foods that you're consuming. So if you mind your gut, you do in fact get a chance to keep your mind. Moderate and severe, severe, we would totally avoid those foods. The next thing that we're going to be looking at are whether or not sugar is right or wrong for you. There's a lot of bacterial overgrowth that can happen in a person's gut from consuming the wrong sugars way too much at the wrong times. And as you can see right here on this part of the test, agave, fructose, which are two common things that are correlative to another, cane sugar. So even when you're consuming foods that have alternative sugars, these sugars could be sensitive to you. So where this person is okay with honey, they're okay with maple, they're okay with sugar, when it switches over into fructose, which is like our fruit versions of sugar, that's not gonna be good for that person. So where one person is okay eating fruits and vegetables, another person might have adverse effects to certain fruits and certain vegetables. So fructose, obviously not gonna come from a sweet potato, but fructose coming from your berries and fructose coming from your high sugar fruits would not be good for this person. Next, we go over into gluten and the gluten proteins and how sensitive you might be to those. Where you're gonna see a book called The Grain Brain where it's gonna talk about, you know, is wheat good, is rye good, is this one bad, is this one good? You can see right here, it tells us, malt, rye, and spelt are good for this person. But if this person's consuming wheat, they're gonna have a little bit of a sensitivity to it. And then there are also severe sensitivities to gluten which these gluten sensitivities are also going to reflect themselves on our actual testing itself. So when we're looking at our gluten sensitivity, we also have genetics that tell us the gluten sensitivity, and you would really know if you're sensitive to gluten. Like, I had to find out because I would literally eat sometimes, and about 30 minutes later, like we're talking middle of the day, I would have to pull over and like take a nap in my car, and I didn't know anything at the point in time. And then I found out, I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know that consuming these foods were causing me to fall asleep in the middle of the day. Now we come over to our casein A1 and our casein A2 proteins. This is where you can do the research learning about casein A1 and casein A2. But right here, goat, bison, and sheep milk, this person's totally fine consuming those. But when they're consuming the whey proteins, so your whey protein concentrates that would be in your protein mixes and a bunch of other uh, those protein bars that are sold at the grocery stores, cow's milk for this person, we can't be consuming cow's milk. So among the foods that you consume, there's different classifications of production from the foods. There's a lot of foods that use agave, cane, cane sugar, fructose. Many of them use honey maple. When it comes to wheat, I mean, you could be consuming something that has fructose, wheat, and cow's milk in it and just absolutely throw in your body for the worst roller coaster ride of its life. Next up, we have our chemicals and our mold. Now, we know that sucralose is not good for the gut microbiome. It does not cause positive bacterial growth or interaction. But this person, not only are they moderately sensitive to sucralose, they start being sensitive to food colorings. So if you're sensitive to one or two food colorings, you should probably just not consume food coloring at all. So what you're gonna see on this part of the test is our chemicals that we're consuming. Most of them like MSG, we've got Red 40, we've got our BHT and BHA that are usually in our breads. They're gonna have high fructose corn syrup over here. So where one person is acceptable, non-reactive to high fructose corn syrup, they're reactive to fructose. This is why we have professional consultation because sometimes some of the things on here may confuse you, such as citric acid. Now think about this. 
Imagine you have a mild sensitivity to citric acid, you have a severe sensitivity to garlic, and then you're consuming garlic that is in the citric acid and water that's at the store that's pre-cut. That for you is just, a, it's just an implosion waiting to happen. So where one person is okay consuming that, another person is not. And that's the point of these tests. And to highlight a few things on these tests, soy lecithin is in absolutely almost everything. It's going to be very hard to not find soy lecithin in a lot of things. It's going to be very hard to not find citric acid. It's going to be hard to not find sucralose. It's going to be very hard to not find certain of these ingredients in foods. But that's why we've created the 50 brain cell challenge. So you can pretty much avoid most of these. Like every single thing on here we would probably avoid and or antibiotics and anti-inflammatory agents. I mean, certain ones just coat pain receptors. Other ones are kind of just like, like antibiotics. What our antibiotics are known to do is just wipe out gut bacteria regardless if it's good or bad. So a lot of people that have taken antibiotics, they've never re-inoculated their gut microbiome and they're missing specific strains of bacteria that are actually positive for your health. And then we're moving over into our herbs and supplements where Ginkgo biloa, ginkgo boa, I've always forget how to pronounce that one, but your mushrooms, your wormwoods, you have your St. John's wort that's actually helpful for depression, at least that's what the research says, like don't take depression meds and St. John's wort at the same time, that could be totally bad for you. Goji berry, you're looking at the possibility for something that is sold on the internet as a health supplement to negatively affect your health. And that is the reason why we prefer to do tests before we tell people what to do. Like for instance, on this, you can see uh, ashwagandha. Okay, something that might be related to stress. Is that right for you? Is that wrong for you? A lot of people know about ashwagandha. Acai berry, there's acai bowls. Imagine if you were eating an acai bowl and then you just started to notice maybe a few weeks or months later, you started to develop rashes. And you're like, why am I getting rashes? Well, it could be something that you're adding to your life that you're not supposed to have in your life. So what you're going to get, assuming that you would also like professional recommendations from our dietitian, are a very in-detailed do and don't do list of foods. Now we can sell this test a la carte or we can also sell this test with an inclusion of a packet of a dietitian, which she's going to write you a diet plan, she's going to interpret this with you, she's going to help you understand the foods, we're going to give you an interpretation guide as well because, well, what does it mean if uh, candida, like what, what are we supposed to do there, why am I supposed to do that? And we've learned one of the biggest things is patient compliance. So if you can understand down on a genetic level, a gut microbiome level, a blood level, a nutritional status level, why you're supposed to make the decisions that you're supposed to make, then we believe that you're actually going to be able to change a majority of your life. So for instance, the red on gluten here, we would also be able to run genomics and find out if there is a gene variant that does cause you to be gluten sensitive. Then we look at our whey proteins, our KCNA1s, our KCNA2s. We're looking at whether or not an avocado is right for you. So this is just one of the many tests that we offer. If you're interested in all three, you're more than welcome to check out the other pages, look at the information on there. But I just want you to understand small, simple things. For instance, somebody's going to tell you that an avocado is good for you. Somebody's going to tell you to do a diet where you eat a bunch of eggs. And you can see right here, egg whites. Egg whites for this person are not good. Why would they consume egg whites? There's so many things out there that are not fun to learn. But I promise you, once you learn them, you start to earn a little bit of a better life. Because for egg yolks and egg whites, not only could they be detrimental to the health of your gut microbiome because your gut microbiome is not currently re-inoculated, you could also have food sensitivity to them. So now in one person where a diet is actually accurate and healthy for that person that you may have decided to follow, it could be the cause of all of your problems. And that's really all I wanted to get across in this video is that I was the person that ate things that I was not supposed to consume. And if you feel narcoleptic ever after eating like carbohydrates, you're like probably gluten sensitive of some sort of way. And you can also be sensitive to the proteins that break down from them. So this is just one of the many tests that we would like to run for you to help you get back to homeostasis. So thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you and I apologize that this website page does not have an immense amount of education. 
because there's not really too much education I could provide to you. Like if you're allergic to latex and you're consuming a latex fruit, well then your mouth is probably getting itchy and you're like, <sighs> your throat's probably going to bother you. But a food sensitivity test at the end of the day is going to help a dietitian diagnose and recognize the problems that are currently manifesting in your reality. And I can't tell you how many people have common problems and they forget to recognize that their common problem probably has a common solution. So one of the most important things to start with would be a blood test to understand where you are and where you want to be. And then just the nerd side of me comes out in this place where I'm like, all right, cool. So if we can look at your gut microbiome and see if your gut microbiome is not re-inoculated, we can re-inoculate your gut microbiome with some supplements and some foods. But the foods that we want to re-inoculate your gut microbiome with, well, you might have a gen genetic predisposition to requiring these nutrients, so we need this type of food. But then you may have sensitivity to that type of food, so we can't give you that food. So what food's going to uh, accomplish our genetic needs? What food's going to accomplish our gut microbiome needs? What food is not going to cause some sort of sensitivities happening inside of you? And then also, where are your actual acute nutritional deficiencies that we can address? I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm a nerd. Please, let me help you never have to wander around the internet ever again and decide what is right or wrong for you. Because you'll know the truth. And your truth is subjective. In the objective world where we believe an avocado is healthy. No. See you in probably not the next video on this page. I have a problem, so I'll probably end up putting a next video down below. But if you don't see one, book a call, have a conversation, and I look forward to talking one day soon. See ya. And just real quick, this stuff I think is hilarious, like when we go through these tests. So it says, a gluten-free grain yellow kern that comes uh, on the cob and a husk, right? Common uses for it, what it's made from, what people are utilizing it for, like your corn starches. And it says, be aware, most corn produced in the United States is genetically modified, registered as a pesticide. So like, corn is literally registered as a pesticide. What? I thought it was food. Why, wait, what, what, what? It's freaking scary out there. And then fructose, I mean, good luck going through a majority of the grocery store without finding some sort of fructose or high fructose corn syrup. There's also the natural version of breaking down a fructose. But be aware, spikes insulin levels, which is your IGF-1 body grow brain slow. It's known as an inflammatory and a non-healthy weight gaining food. So when you spike your insulin, that stimulates weight gain, IGF-1, body grow, brain slow, lower levels of IGF-1 are known to have better cognitive functioning as a person ages with research behind neurodegeneration, studying people and find out, okay, who's the people that are developing these neurodegenerative diseases and their cognition is declining over an X amount of years through what diet and what they're doing with their lives. So... Yeah, I love this, and I, I love you for watching this far. Thank you so much for enjoying education. But beware, spiking your insulin is bad. Inflammation, horrible. Weight gaining foods, sometimes not horrible for people that are underweight and their hormones are suffering because they're underweight. So now the video is over. There's really nothing else I can add in here, which bothers me a lot because I want to be able to educate even more. But um, hope to see you on a phone call soon. Hope to be able to help you solve all your health problems. And see you later. Talk soon.